Okay, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this, we're going to be doing is we're going to be home canning up chicken. We're going to take chicken thighs, but with the skin on bone, bone in, and put them in jars. Why do I do this? Is so I can have meals on the truck. That are, all I got to do is warm and go. All right. It's not a it's not a hassle. Take the skin out, skin off, and the bone out if, I, if, that's, if that's what I want. Or I can just stick this in the pressure cooker with some rice and some dehydrated vegetables and have me a meal. Let's get to it. Right. Wife went and bought me a bunch of thighs. And I greatly appreciate that. As y'all know, from last week, I was kind of a little sick all week. And I run out of food on the truck. So we're just going to put this down in here. And what you want to do is you want to press this down as much as you can. Now. When you get the jar to the point that it's full, you want an inch and a quarter of headspace. I think I can only do one, it looks like. Let's see if I can get this. We'll go to tab bit. Oh, not even enough headspace. All right, looks like I can just do one. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna pack these full. If I get one small like this, I'll try to put two in there. Here's what I'm gonna do. See, I got that one right there. And then I've got this one. There you go. I can get two in that one. And that's all you got to do. This is basically pack this to where you can get one or two in. Now, if I was using quart jars, I could get, and I was using uh, my uh, chicken legs, I could get two or three of those in per, per jar, if not more. So we're going to try this again. May have to open up the other one. The other one looks like it's got smaller pieces in it. Let me see. Yeah. You don't have to trim the fat off. The fat is where all the flavor is. Now you want an inch and a quarter head space. So that's what we're shooting for. And I'll be back once I get all the jars done. I don't know whether y'all saw that in my body in the way, so I'm going to do one more for you. Big. Thing. One in like that. Put another one in right, right next to it, standing up. Push down. Use that inch and a quarter head space. When I get this all done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now, I'm going to turn this in just to a beginning canning session for beginners. Alright, here's your chicken. This, you want to pack it to where you have a quarter inch head space in there. You really don't want any voids, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that. But I'll be eating these fast enough that they shouldn't go bad. You want to wipe your rims. You want to use out uh, some, some vinegar. Wipe the steel vinegar is what I, I use. I'll put it in this little thing right here. And what you want to do is you want to go around the rim. And you want to get rid of all the grease that you can. Okay, grease and the oils from the chicken. Once you do that, you take your lids. Now, your lids do not have to be um, sterilized if you're pressure canning. It does if you're water bathing, but not when you're, but not, not when you're pressure canning. Now, when you put your ring on, you just want to take it, tighten it up, finger tight. That's it. All right. Now, you might say, well, John, you're grabbing those things with your hand and moving them around. You got chicken grease on the sides. Well, yes, I do. But the process of canning in and of itself is going to kill whatever bacteria that may be there. Salmonella, botulism, whatever. Okay. And beyond popular belief, and I've had people argue this with me, heat, the pressure and the heat from the canner is not what seals the cans. What seals the cans is the rapid cooling that can cause siphoning. And what we want to do is we want to reduce the effort of siphoning as much as possible. But the wrap, but the wrap, but the cooling is what actually creates a seal because once the heat and the pressure has pushed out all the oxygen and you got it up to temperature for so long as you do, it then becomes just void and you're cooking your product. Okay? Once you cook your product and all the oxygen is gone, then when you start to cool it, the cool the air wants to go back in. And so that's where 
where the suction action, the vacuum inside the jars, pulls the jars lids down, creating that seal. And that's the reason why the dimple right here goes away. I know it sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. It's like Mouse Toes always says, it's not rocket science, it's just canon. Mouse Toes, I hope you're watching this. I enjoyed your last video. Can't wait to see the next. All right, here we go. I'm going to take care of all this right here and get, get all the grease off. Now, since we are raw packing this, and we're raw packing it without hot heat, without liquid going in here, and raw packing is just packing the way I could have said. Nothing else goes in. You're just going to use natural juices out of the chicken and fat. All right. Now, raw packing, you want to do it cold. So you want your you want your jars at room temperature. You want your canner at room temperature. You want your water in the canner at room temperature. Now, this takes a little longer to bring up. So I'm not going to say it doesn't, because it does. But it's so much worth it. You ain't got to worry about blowing out jars. And we all know how... Ball has been lately on their jars and their lids. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to four lids, I think, as my primary lid, and also stay with my harvest guard, resealables, reusables. So I'm pretty set on lids. But the jars, you know, I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of jars. And there, in that little short period of time, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pints of chicken. Let me get ready and put them in a the canner. I'll bring you right back. All right, guys, we're back. Cold canner, cold water. All right. Now I've got really ironized water and heavy and, and, and just nasty. It clouds up my jars. I'm putting in just a little bit of vinegar, a splash of vinegar. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my eye on and get this started, okay? I put my jars inside. And I know I'm going to have to do a two-layer system, which I'll show you all all that right here in a little bit. online you can see a lot of people doing the tiered set tiered up okay take your second your second divider put it in there put your chicken put the rest of your stuff in all right now that's all there is to it now you notice when I was putting my bottom section in, I didn't have to worry about uh, the water going over the jars. That's because I measured it precisely. Ball tells you, I mean, ball, but I have an All-American canner. An All-American will tell you exactly how much water you got put in here. All right. For me, it's three and a half to four quarts. This is my top to my canner. Some of y'all said y'all couldn't see what was going on in the last one. All right, I want to set it like this. Now, there's an arrow right here. Let's see if I can get that to focus in a little better. There's an arrow right here. And you'll see a notch right here. Okay, I just want to take my lid and turn it to where that knot, that arrow is in that notch. Okay. I got a gap. I do not have any kind of other seal on here. I just have a metal to metal seal. So I have a gap. And what I want to do is make sure this gap is even all the way around. So that's looking pretty good. Let me back you out a little bit. All right. Now what you want to do with this all American is you want to do opposite sides. Okay. Opposing sides. You do that, you tighten it down until it's just snug. Do the other ones the same way. So it's just snug. This one right here too. 
so it's just snug all right now this is where you crank down on them crank it down 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 and that's really all there is to it let me bring y'all down a little bit now this is my gauge all right i do have an all-american i do go by the gauge all right i also have a weight if i can see it right quick which i don't but i also have a weight that goes on here now what we are going to do is wait for the air to be evacuated out of this system okay what that means is that when i have a steady stream a steam coming up out of the uh, out of the steam cock okay I'll put the timer on for 10 minutes and I'll let it steam out 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is over, I'll put my weight on here. That will pressurize the inside even to, to completion. It will also make this little thing jiggle around for a little while. And I'll process this chicken for 75 minutes. For pints, if you're doing quarts, it's 95 minutes. So let's get this started. I'll bring you back when it starts steaming. All right, we're back. Steady stream of steam coming up right here. Don't know whether the, whether the camera's picking that up or not. So I'm going to do this for 10 minutes. And when the 10 minutes timer goes off, I'll be back to the weight on. All right, timer's about ready to go off. Where I live, I'm going to use 10 pounds of pressure. Um, so when that goes off, it just did in that timer. And we'll put it on 10 pounds. I can tell you right now, my scanner is already up to pressure. I can drop that down now. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, let it get it back down to where it needs to be, which is going to be about 10 to 11 pounds, and then I'll start my 90 minute or 70 minute, 75 minute timer. I'll bring you back when this is all completed, and I get ready to crack the cannon. Okay, we're down to the last few seconds of this canning session. Um, Timer's about ready to go off. When it goes off, and I'll turn the eye off, and I'll let this come down naturally. This will go all the way down to zero, and when I spin this with my fingertip, there shouldn't be any steam coming out when I when I start to, when I go to crack this. Now, when I crack my lid, I'm going to take it and turn it and set it up a little bit. That way, it cools, and I'll let it sit that way for ten minutes. I'll be back. Okay guys, take this off. It's still releasing a little steam. You can see that right there. So I'm gonna let the steam come down. I'll go ahead and I'll crack it. You know, this steam's gone. We'll go ahead and we'll crack it. It's still boiling away, so I'm just going to take this and leave it cracked a little bit. I'll be back when this gets done. Okay, let's go ahead and take this chicken out and take a look at it. Well, this is raw packed chicken, and all it's doing is cooking in its own juice. Look at that. Still cooking. His own juice. Now this will have a um, fat cap like the pork did. There's nothing wrong with that fat cap. That's where all your flavor is going to be. Just melt it down with the food and go with it. Perfectly cooked, y'all.
That one's a little high. I think that's one I have two in. Get this out. So that's inside. You hearing a pop? I'm hearing a pop. Ceiling. Ain't nothing better than hear that seal. Nothing better. Look at that. Absolutely nothing better. Room up here for them. Everybody knows that I like to place this on wood. I think it gives more airflow, but these can uh, come down naturally. That's my opinion, my opinion only. I have nothing against anybody who uses anything else. But I see people using cloth, uh, cloths and blankets, canning blankets. And I wonder myself, how is it going to come down as, like it should? But your kitchen, your rules. Nothing against it. Just, you know, I've never done it. All right. I guess I'll give it a try though. I'm out of sticks and I don't want to go in the other room and get any and leave this. So, get this little pallet down. I'm going to take this last one out, but look at this last one. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Alright. Now, what we'll do is I will come back in about 12 hours and check these. And we'll let it rest for 24 hours. And if it's good, I'll take it with me. If not, I'll reprocess. I'll be back tomorrow to show you the results. All right, it's the next morning. We're gonna look at this chicken, look at that. Look how nice that is. Nice fat cap, meat, juice. All right, for those that are just beginning, you never wanna store your jars with your rings on, okay? This I check the ring. So just grab it by the lid and lift up. If you can do that, you know that it's sealed. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to wash all these up and put them away. And we're done. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Hit the big thumbs up button. And I'll see you again soon. And like I always say, be good. Be safe, and I'll see you when I see you.